Having spent a video on sigma notation, I now get to, get to define the definite integral. The process I am using in this video is called the Riemann definition of the integral. What is the integral? It is the thing that solves the distance traveled problem, the area under the curve problem. It will measure the area under the graph of a function when the function is non-constant. It is a main definition of calculus, so it follows the pattern. I make an approximation process and then take the limit of that process. All the main definitions of calculus use this approach, approximate and then take the limit. You could define calculus as all the mathematical constructions you can make with approximations and limits. For the area under a curve between A and B in the domain, I approximate with the rectangles. I'll assume that these are all the same width. The total distance from A to B is B minus A. If there are n rectangles, the width of each rectangle is B minus A over n. But what about the height? Well, the top of each rectangle meets the graph of the function at some point. This is some output of the function. I'll write this as f of x star. What is this star notation? This is pretty strange, but the star notation here indicates that x is some point in the rectangle, but I really don't care which. Each point in each little piece of the domain for each rectangle will lead to a height f of x star. Different heights will produce different rectangles and different approximations, but I'm hoping in the limit that this will all work out. So x star is just some point in each subinterval, a little piece of the interval from A to B at the bottom of each rectangle. So then the area of each rectangle is width times height, B minus A over N times F of x star. Let me now go to the algebra. I have the width of a small rectangle, b minus a over n. I have the height of a small rectangle, f of x k star. I have n rectangles, which I index using the index k. So x k star is a point in the kth rectangle. The product is the area of the kth rectangle, and the approximation process adds these up. This is where I use sigma notation. I have a bunch of rectangles indexed with the index k from 1 to n, and that's the setup for sigma notation, so I use it. The area, area is approximately the sum of n small rectangles, each with width b minus a over n, and height the function value at some xk star in each little piece of the domain. That's the approximation process. This is calculus, so I want a limit of the approximation process. I take the limit, as the number of rectangles goes to infinity. This should, for well-behaved functions, produce exactly the area, no longer an approximation, but an exact value. The notation for this is here. This is called the definite integral. The bounds of the integral are placed on the bottom and top of this symbol, the integral symbol. The function then follows with this strange dx terms afterwards. The dx term, which is sometimes confusingly called the differential, is part of the integral notation. Like the denominator dx in Leibniz notation for the derivative, it is useful for reminding me what the independent variable is for this integral. This notation, this definite integral, means the area under the graph of f between a and b. It is calculated as the limit of the approximation by rectangles. This limit process is a very unwieldy one. This doesn't look like the limit for the derivative, where I have a function that I could actually do algebra. I have this sum, I have this strange point xk star. Even more than the derivative, the Riemann definition of the integral is very difficult to use directly. In the next video or two, I'll talk about how to avoid doing the integral directly, but before that, I want to make one attempt at an integral by definition. One thing I need to try to do a calculation is a way to write this random point xk star. It can be any point in the kth piece of the interval. To get there, what I can do is I can start at a, the left point of the full interval, and then I can add the width of the small rectangle k times. This is a plus k times b minus a over n, since b minus a over n is the width of each small rectangle. I'll use this expression for xk star in my example. So let me do an example. Say I want the area under the quadratic y equals x squared between 0 and 3. That area is calculated by the definite integral. I set up the Riemann definition, the limit, the sum, 
the function and the width. The function is x squared, so I have x k star squared. I use my expression for x k star, which is where a is 0 and b is 3. So x k star is 0 plus k times 3 minus 0 over n, which just works out to 3k over n. That's what I'll use, so I put that in for xk star. It is a point in each little interval, and the square will, will be the height of each small rectangle. Then b minus a is again 3 minus 0 over n, which is 3 over n, so I put that in for the width term as well. Now I have a sum. I can do some algebra with this. Multiplying out the denominator, I have 3 squared times 3, which which is 27. This is a constant, so by linearity, this 27 can come out. What is left in the numerator is k squared. The denominator is n squared times n, which is n cubed. Since the index of the sum is k, k is the thing that changes in the sum. That means that n is also constant as far as the sum is concerned, so it can also come out in front of the sigma notation. I'm left with the sum of k squared. This is where I needed those special sums from the last video. The sum of the first n square numbers is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. So I replace the sum with this expression. This special sum was very necessary. Without it, I don't know how to get a function out of this where I can then evaluate the limit. Now I have a limit. This is a limit as n goes to infinity, so I can use asymptotic analysis. I need to expand the multiplication of the denominator to see this, which I do here. I also cancel 3 from the 27 and the 6, since they share a common factor. The result is a limit where the order is n cubed in the numerator and n cubed in the denominator. These are the same, so I get the leading coefficients as the result of the limit. The top is 9 times 2 and the bottom is 2, so the ratio is just 9. I conclude that the area under the quadratic x squared between 0 and 3 is exactly 9 units of area. This is a reasonable answer. Looking at this area, I can believe that it covers 9 square units. It's always good to think about the answers for definite integrals. Do they make sense? Do they give a believable area for the function that I started with? This is the only example I'm going to do in this video. To repeat myself, working with the Riemann integral by definition is pretty miserable. I want to move on as soon as I can to find a way to calculate integrals without having to use the definition. The definition is important. These things need good formal mathematic definitions to have a solid foundation, but I really don't want to work with these sums and limits unless I have to.